today I am going to continue with the gas side of things, so let's get started. Run titles! Carrying on with the plumbing side of the kitchen fit, um, I have got my gas dropout vent, so that will go a hole through the floor in the gas locker so if there's any gas leaks it will go out through here because gas is heavier than air so it should sink and go through the hole and not kill me i've also bought this thing which is a gas level indicator note it says indicator not gauge which should help just indicate how much gas is in the bottle. It says place on the lower half of the cylinder, wait, turn on the gas and wait for 10 minutes. In the winter, the bar on the left will be activated, in the summer, the bar on the right. So, yeah. So I've got my, uh, I've got my gas bottle, and, oh, don't know how this will work, because there's kind of a ridge in the middle of the bottle. And I guess you're supposed to put it like that. But, yeah. But I'm not gonna turn it on, cause it's not attached to anything. That wouldn't be very clever. It said leave this on for 10 minutes and it will give you a reading, but I'm not sure if uh, there's a problem with the fact that the gas bottle has like, um, a raised up ridge around the middle so the indicator can't sit flat against the gas bottle because of that um, it might sit on the top see if I put it on the top half above the ridge the whole thing doesn't fit look if I turn it sideways you can see that there's like about an inch sticking away from the bottle. So, not very sure how effective this will be. What I would probably say, if you've got, I think this is a 3.9 kilo gas bottle, doesn't fit on here very well, so probably wouldn't advise you buy one. But if you've got a bigger gas bottle, probably pretty effective. It's always quite difficult to work out where to drill your hole through the bottom of the van. What I've done is measured where the waste pipe came through and I've marked some tape on the side of the van. Then I've measured 40 inches to just here and put some more tape. Because I'm not quite sure where it's gonna come out inside the van, I'm gonna drill from the outside up with a pilot hole before I then drill the main hole back down with my hole saw to make the dropout for the gas. What I've done, I've transferred the tape, um, if you can see it, I don't know if you can, here, oh it's peeling off, so here is the tape mark and I'm going to drill, I'm going to drill in a good place up here, sorry about the traffic. Um, and then when I get inside, I uh, will find the other side of the hole. So there looks like a good place. I've got to get right out of the way because I've only got glasses and not safety goggles. But you should always wear safety goggles, unlike me. Well that's done it, there's a hole in the van. You can see there in the corner, just about, that is where the holes come through, which is perfect. That's exactly where I wanted it really. Um, I just didn't know I was gonna be able to have it there. So I will get the hole saw and drill through. the hole 
of my van. So that is the finished dropout vent fitted. I have put lots of silicon around the inside of the vent and then it's screwed down. I did have to take the edge off two sides of it because it didn't quite fit against the beams there. But yeah, so that is the gas vent. I've also got the gas bottle strapped in with this strap here to hold it from moving around. And I've got that indicator on there, but I'm not really sure if it's doing any good. Well, the gas is all fitted. I've got the regulator on. I have got the Jubilee clip, hose clamp, whatever you call it clamping the pipe on and I've tightened it physically as tight as I can do it without I think breaking the screwdriver um, so I'm hoping that is tight enough I've got my gas vent fitted in the cupboard um, my dropout vent so if there's any gas leaks and as I was saying before I've left plenty of pipe on here so that I can Pull it out the cupboard to make sure all the connections are tight and sealed rather than struggling in a confined cupboard and perhaps not having the space to make sure that the pipework and everything was tightly fitted. So the next thing for me to do, I will turn the gas on and I will try and light the cooker and if it works I'm going to make my first cup of tea. Gas on. Not hearing any hissing. Uh, let's go for this one. I can hear hissing. We got gas. I'm gonna pull the door. I think the wind was getting it. You can watch the kettle boil now. Well that's all very exciting, my first cup of tea on the new hob with water out the tap and gas out of the cooker, the hob, the whatever it's called. So cheers, didn't even really want a cup of tea but I had to document it by making a cup of tea with uh, everything working. Let's just hope that uh, the gas is all fine and there's no leaks. This is going to be a game changer because I've been cooking on a camping stove for the last six months and I've been just getting water out of bottles and containers and I've not had a sink with drainage. So now 
I'm going to have running water, a sink with drainage and a cooker that I can just turn on and not have to set up. I just lift the lid up and there's my cooker. Game changer. I'll leave it there for today with the gas episode. Glad that it's all working. Had my cup of tea. Um, we will see in the morning if everything smells okay. Although with the gas dropout valve vent, whatever it's called, probably won't even know. Um, but that at least we'll know that the vent is working. The connections are really, really tight on the gas uh, on the pipes and things. So. I'm quite confident that they will be fine. The end of this episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please do give me a like. It would be brilliant if you could comment. And if you would subscribe to my channel, I would be really grateful. There is a button just about here. <laughs>